Chaitali Bagh, Chief of Bureau with Evasion and Defense Universe. Right now, I am at Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium where uh, Pravek, the company, the automobile company, has inaugurated a special SUV for Army, Indian Army. It's called Veer. It's a launching ceremony of Veer. And I'm sitting right now with Mr. Ram Devedi, who is a Chief Strategic Officer, and he's going to tell us more about Veer, how and why they have developed the specific automobile for Indian Army. Welcome, Ram. Thank you so much for your time because it's pretty busy, I can see, but Thank still, you, so you have much. agreed to talk to us. Please tell us about Veer. So, I think there is a need uh, now in all the armies in the world to have uh, electric vehicles. For sure, the goal is not to replace all the, you know, like ice engine vehicles. But electric vehicles have some solid arguments uh, for the army. Uh, one, very simple, it's silent. You saw, you saw when the, the, the car was there, there was absolutely no noise. The car entered and no one realized uh, two tons cars was entering the, the place. And the center of gravity is very low because all the weight of the car is under your feet. It's in the battery. There is no up engine, so it's very interesting. And, um, and then the supply chain is very different. So when you have, you know, like petrol, you need to move petrol by trucks uh, in a military uh, area, which is quite difficult and have also a lot of issues with um, heat uh, thermal signature because you can re really really see where is the, the petrol and it's highly flammable, it's easy, easy to destroy. With uh, electric car, you can have um, solar panels or some you know, like local points of energy generation uh, to use them in the car. So it has, it has bad part also, like for example, for sure the supply chain of petrol is huge in India and it's everywhere. But for some specific application, I think it's uh, interesting. There are two applications I think, I think where it uh, makes a lot of sense. One is uh, recon. If you want to have ve vehicles ahead and uh, recon terrain, uh, it's very interesting to have a silent and uh, low center of gravity vehicle. And then also it's interesting for the, um, to recharge energy. Because now the, um, the, the solar is a tech solar. He has a lot of devices that require energy. From light, satellites, communication devices, it's a ton of electronic devices. Each Indian solar carries a ton of electronics and you need to recharge them. And if you use a petrol car to run a generator and then create energy, it's totally inefficient. When you have basically an electric vehicle in the army, it acts like a power bank. You know, like for your phone, you have a power bank on wheels that you can bring anywhere and recharge a lot of things. So I think for like a command center, we have a lot of laptops and equipment of communications and radars and everything. It's a very, very good car. All right. So Ram, tell me something. For Indian army, the Indian army terrains are really uh, difficult. They are not so easy. Yeah. So and very are you going diverse. to yes? Yeah. It's very diverse as well. Now you are building this specific vehicle, which is okay. To tell my uh, audiences, this is also the launch of Pravek Defy, yeah. and I it feels that uh, Veer is on the lines of Defy as well, yes. right? The same so have, it's like it's the same platform. So is it? Have you guys customized it for the Indian Army? Yes. The one thing we never wanted to do. So there are two things here. One, uh, we are you know like a company who's just launching its first car right now, so we cannot make something super super different. We need to have a common platform like that for us. It's one cost of development. So that's one thing. But the other side, we don't want to do something that soldiers sometimes call painting green. You take a civilian thing, you just put a, a layer of green painting and then it's become army. It's not like this, you know, like you need to change a lot and a lot of things in the car. So the platform is the same between the civilian, uh, you know, like vehicle and the military one. But then a lot of things, you know, like are different. The waterproofing of the car is very, very high. The all terrain capacities, the features, the, the way the, you can, you know, like manipulate equipment around and look, you know, like uh, a turret on top, have, you know, like bags, storage, everything. That's very, very different. So we don't try to have, you know, like a regular car just painting green, but have, you know, like a, something that will cater the most of the needs of the Indian Army. Right. And uh, about we getting inducted in the Indian Army, how far uh, is Provake from that? From so that we are in discussion, you know, like uh, we are in discussion for three years now with the Indian Army and they welcome us, you know, like, uh, I mean, it was fantastic. We tried a lot of vehicles from the, from the Indian Army and uh, it's not something you can, you know, like, develop in-house mm -hmm. just with engineers and then expect them to like it. You need to develop, you know, like uh, jointly with the Indian Army. So we, uh, we get a lot of insight from them to try to develop this vehicle. And then when, you know, like uh, we're at a more mature stage, we'll be able to uh, launch a partnership together. Great. Thank you so much, Ram. And it you really wishes that Pravek gets inducted in the, um, we gets inducted into the Indian Army. Thank you so much. And we talk about it more when it, it is done. Thank you so much for your time. My and pleasure. And you should the try the, the VR right now. Sure. Thank you so much.